Hello, everybody, and welcome to Pure Liberal Fire. Today is November 3rd, 2010. Uh, my name is Kai Zan. Today, I'd like to discuss uh, the elections, uh, the midterm elections yesterday in the United States of America. I think that uh, it was a tremendous victory for the Republicans. It was a massive repudiation of the Democrats and uh, Barack Obama. But uh, in the end, it's not really much of a victory for freedom, even though you can say that ultimately uh, the greatest victors of yesterday were, was the Tea Party. According to NBC Nightly News, of all the, of all the major winners on the national level which won, uh, they say that one-third of all people had some sort of affiliation with the, uh, the Tea Party folks. So I think it's, it's sort of tremendous, and hopefully this is a force, this is, this is a quasi-libertarian force which will, which will do some good. But I don't think ultimately it was really much of a victory for freedom or much of a victory for um, a, a real libertarianism. And I, I also don't think that the people that won really have any sort of ability to clean up the current political mess or else uh, get the economy going. I think that if you want to solve the current problem, even though it's, it's very easy to solve, I think that the current people really can't do it. What we have to have happen is we need to have people cut government spending, not taxation, because Obama cut taxes a lot. And... Uh, uh, George Bush before him also cut taxes a lot, so we need to knock that off. We need to cut government spending and, and we need to cut government regulations. Uh, those are the only two things we need to do. It's very, very simple, but uh, but no, who understands it? Does anyone in the Republican Party or the Democratic Party or the, the Tea Party understand it? Um, you know, I, I, I really don't think so. I think that the biggest winners yesterday was, uh, was Marco Rubio, the senator-elect from Florida, which seems like he is sort of a quasi-libertarian, and then maybe also Rand Paul, the senator-elect from Kentucky. And he also seems like uh, he, he's almost definitely a libertarian, so he joins his father, uh, Ron Paul, of, of Texas. And it's, it's sort of a miracle that these guys are able to even get themselves elected. I think that they do it by sort of... Uh, a sort of a clever way of arguing. They, they have a lot of experience sort of uh, talking around the issues and sort of avoiding um, the usual charges that they're very strange or they're very extreme. I think it's it's really easy to, to destroy a libertarian by calling him strange or extreme, but somehow these guys say that they're real conservatives, whatever that means, or true conservatives, whatever that means, or um, old-fashioned conservatives, or else some founding fathers conservatives, or especially, especially they like to say that they are uh, constitutional conservatives. So that's a kind of a clever, slick lie. I don't know that uh, lies work. As far as I can tell, lies never work. They don't work in politics and they don't work in life. But uh, these two guys seem to be doing pretty well, so we have to sort of wish them luck. I mean, they're the two most, uh, the strongest pro-freedom guys in the government, even though you can say that when it comes to like personal issues, personal issues and social issues, such as uh, legalization of drugs, even something very soft like marijuana, uh, legalization of drugs and prostitution and broadcast obscenity and gambling, uh, they seem very poor. And when it comes to like uh, foreign policy, they, they, want, they want us to be non-interventionists, but it doesn't really occur to these guys, either Ron Paul, Paul or Rand Paul, that uh, it's okay to intervene overseas just as long as you stand up for freedom. It, it's bad if, if you sort of go into Iraq and you support this uh, you know god-awful socialist Sharia dictatorship by... Uh, by Maliki and this god-awful socialist Shariaist dictatorship by Karzai in Afghanistan. If America was pro-freedom in Iraq and in Afghanistan, then government intervention abroad is not that bad. But they don't seem to get that, and they also don't seem to get personal freedom. So it, it's, it's strange, but you have to support the best people you can find. And, and Rand Paul and Ron Paul are the best we've got right now. The Tea Party is the best we've got right now. And even the sort of dreadful Libertarian Party, which is so weak, is, is also the best we got. So you have to sort of... Um, you have to support them, and not the Republicans and not the Democrats. I think that um, maybe the biggest loser yesterday was California. These guys seem sort of crazy. I used to live in California, and I thought it was beautiful, but um, they seem to have gone downhill in the last 20 years. And maybe the best place on earth is being reduced to some sort of uh, mediocre place, which is not even all that impressive uh, by, by American standards. I, I think that uh, uh, they elected Jerry Brown, which is like a kind of an Orwellian nightmare. He's a new governor. They, they elected a Barbara, they, re, they returned Barbara Boxer to the Senate. She's a kind of Orwellian nightmare. I think that uh, even on the, something very simple like the, like the legalization of marijuana, they failed that. That, that, uh, that law, Proposition 19, was defeated by about 55% to 45%. I didn't really have any hope for that because uh, as far as I can tell, this is like, if, if you legalize marijuana or if you legalize um, prostitution, which certain countries do legalize both, 
I think it's the Netherlands and maybe Germany and a few other countries too will legalize drugs and also prostitution. If you do this, you're basically repudiating the whole idea of the welfare state. Uh, America is a country and the whole world really believes in the welfare state. We believe in do-gooding. We believe that as long as the government is sort of uh, looking out for your best interests and sort of coer it, it's, good, it's okay to coerce you. So if you ever sort of legalize marijuana, then you've, you've, you sort of repudi repudiated the whole idea of the welfare state. And before long, you might have a capitalist state. So I think that uh, there are vast forces arrayed against the, the legalization of marijuana. I mean, they're very subtle and they're very general, but I think they're absolutely overwhelming. It's interesting to see some of the quotes. Um, according to uh, uh, John Boehner, I don't even know how to pronounce his name, but uh, the guy, according to John Boehner, the guy that's going to head up uh, the House of Representatives for the public, Republicans, he said, quote, it's pretty clear that the Obama-Pelosi agenda was rejected. We need to change course, unquote. And he also said uh, earlier today, quote, I think there's a mandate to reduce the size of government, unquote. The, both of these statements are true, but they're also very weak and very lame. They sort of let you know that uh, this is not a guy that's going to fight for freedom and justice and individual rights. This is not a guy that's going to fight for life, liberty, property, and privacy. I think that Barack Obama maybe had the best statement, one of the best statements. He sort of spoke for the voters and he said, quote, We want you to focus completely on jobs and the economy, unquote. But how is Obama going to focus completely on jobs and the economy? He doesn't really know anything about it. The key to, uh, to jobs is to getting rid of all the regulations. And Obama is a kind of a very strong fascist who believes in, that the government should regulate everything. He's a do-gooder. He thinks as long as the government is, uh, is, is a do-gooder do -gooder government, it can, it can engage in tyranny. It can force people to do things. It can push people around. And he really has no idea that all of his million and one regulations uh, of the economy are exactly what is destroying us, especially maybe the fact that since uh, it seems like 80% of all the jobs are created by small business. And small business really does suffer when uh, Barack Obama and all these other guys get together and they pass all their helpful legislation, all their coercive legislation, which is going to make uh, the world sweet for, uh, for low-quality workers and, and all kinds of workers. So I think it's really hopeless for him to focus on the economy. And Bill Clinton said, it's the economy stupid. That was his great slogan. It's the economy stupid. And he, and he did a pretty good job, but I think that Barack Obama is more ideologically committed to fascism and a big, bro big, brother, um, help, um, a big bro brother philosophy which helps you out. So I, I don't see how he can focus on the economy and jobs. I think that the, maybe the best quote comes from uh, Rand Paul, the senator-elect senator -elect from Kentucky. He said that, quote, my aim is not to pass laws, but to repeal them, unquote. And that's pretty nice, but uh, in the end, he's not going to repeal, he's not really going to uh, repeal anything. We live in a world which is philosophically and morally bankrupt, at least when it comes to government and politics and the law. And, and there's really no one that's opposed to the welfare state, no one in the Democratic Party, no one in the Republican Party, and not even anybody in the Tea Party, except for maybe a handful of, of uh, very unusual individuals such as Ron Paul and Rand Paul. But I think it's, it's basically hopeless for um, Rand Paul to repeal laws as he promises. There's nobody that's going to repeal the 1960s Great Society legislation from Lyndon Johnson. There's nobody that's going to repeal the 1930s uh, New Deal legislation from uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. And basically the whole disaster of the last 150 years when the government has grown bigger and bigger and bigger, there, there's no one that's going to stand against uh, uh, Big Brother in the way they should. So we need to cut back on spending desperately. We need to cut back on regulation totally, but uh, that's not going to happen. So we, we, need a, we need a political revolution. That's what we need, not a Tea Party. We really do need a full-scale political revolution.